As more and more artists start losing their job to AI, only one question remains. When will we reach full economic automation? Well, it turns out one guy called Tom Davidson already answered that question and his median estimate is 2040. So should we all stop saving for retirement and invest in Nvidia instead? Well, maybe. This is only one prediction. Tom Davidson's best guess. Using the same model, but with more aggressive parameters, you get 2027. So which one is it? 2027 or 2040? Because if it's 2027, that's a pretty big deal. That's only two and a half years away. So in this video, I'll go through the most important parameters from Tom Davidson's model so that you at home can decide for yourself what fraction of your savings you want to save for retirement or invest in NVIDIA. But first, let's start with some timelines lore. If we go back in time to the distant past of July 2020, Ajay Kotura shared a report called Forecasting Transformative AI with Biological Anchors, where she predicted there was a 50% chance that we would get transformative AI by 2050. And by transformative AI, we mean some technology that would 10x the growth rate of total GDP, meaning we would go from 2 to 3% a year to 20 to 30% a year. And with a growth rate of 20 to 30%, the entire economy would double in only four years. So why did she predict we would get transformative AI by 2050? And what model did she use? Roughly, the two main things she does is, first, estimate how much compute you would need to train a full-blown transformative AI. And second, estimate when would humanity be able to spend all that money and compute on a single training run. But then, in 2022, she shared an update, saying that her median estimate for transformative AI went from 2050 to 2040. So, a decrease of 10 years in her estimate in only two years' time. One of the reasons she gives to justify her update is that in her initial report, she didn't actually study how progress in R&D actually influenced R&D investments. She had looked at algorithmic and hardware progress as simple trend lines, but she didn't actually model the case in which if ML systems end up having near-term lucrative applications, we will observe an increase in spending in software and hardware R&D. And one of the persons who fleshed out this argument to Ajay Kotra is none other than Tom Davinson, the author of the full automation model I've introduced at the beginning of the video. But what does R&D spending in hardware and software has to do with full economic automation. And more generally, what are we looking at when we're looking at Tom Davidson's model? This is a simulation of what happens in Tom Davidson's world. His work built on top of Ajay Kotra's work while still adding some meaningful changes. To compare these predictions with Ajay's predictions, you can just click here on Compare with BioAnchors. And what you see is that the dotted lines correspond to Ajay's predictions, but the full lines corresponds to his predictions. So this is actually a log plot. And on the x-axis, you see that we have about three decades starting from 2024. And on the y-axis, you have a bunch of different metrics like training, computer investment, hardware, software. But what do we actually mean by hardware progress in flop per dollars or software progress in 2022 flop per flop? And how does this relate to forecasting full economic automation? So if you open up Tom's report, you'll see this figure that explains the relationship between software, hardware, and spending on the largest running run. And the relationship between all of these variables, so the growth in spending, the growth in hardware progress, and the growth in software progress, is the growth in effective compute in the largest running run. So I'll come back to this formula in a bit, but for now, to understand this, we need to look at the effective flop gap. The gap we're talking about here is between having some AI that automates 20% of economic task and having full-on AGI that automates 100% of economic task. But why do we care about these values, 20% and 100%? This is to model what he calls takeoff speeds. So if we go back to the curves we had before, 20% automation corresponds to the vertical line in the middle. And 100% automation corresponds to the line on the right. So the effective flop gap is between this middle line and this right line. And instead of this effective flop gap, where automation increases from 20% to 100%, the hardware progress in a log plot 
starts looking more like an exponential. And similarly, for software, at the end of the trend, there's some huge jump that spans six to eight orders of magnitude. But one thing you might have noticed here, we're talking about effective flop and not just flop. So for people who want to know, flop means floating points operations. And it's one of the most basic operations you can do on your computer. And by effective flop here, we mean how many flops are we actually using to train our neural network. So the actual thing you're trying to compute here is the difference in effective compute between when you're automating 100% of economy task and when you're automating only 20% of economy task. But how do we actually calculate effective compute? Well, the formula is actually quite simple. You just need to multiply these three terms. By which I mean, you multiply the dollar and flop, the flop per dollars, and this one, which is the 2022 flop per flop. So what happens when you multiply those three terms? The first thing actually represents the amount of dollars you're spending on your flop. So let's say you're at AGI time and you're spending around $10 trillion on your training run. This corresponds to your dollar on flop. Let's call this category spending. The second category is about how many flop a dollar can get you, which is related to hardware progress, which I'll abbreviate here as H. So to give a concrete example of how many flops you can get per dollar for GPUs, let's look at this report from Epoglot AI. But if you look at the empirical GPU flops per dollar, we see that on a log plot, if we're around 2030, we can extrapolate the data points to get something like 10 to the 11 flops per dollar. If we go back here, and we're trying to estimate the effective compute for AGI, we're going to assume that we're actually in 2030. So we can approximate the price for uh, flops at 100 billion flops per dollar. And we multiply this to our spending. And finally, the third item is the amount of 2022 flop per flop. So this third software term actually corresponds to algorithmic progress. And the way to think about this is that, let's say you purchased a certain amount of flop here. How many flops will actually be used to train your neural network is what this software terms tells you. So if in 2030, when we're training our AGI that can automate 100% of economic task, we're actually able to use way more basic float operations to train our neural network, this would mean that we've made a lot of algorithmic progress. And the question is, how many more flops can you use per purchased flop? For the sake of example, to compute this effective computed AGI, I'll say that we're using our flop 1,000 times more efficiently in 2030. So we multiply all this by 1,000. This 1,000 corresponds to software. This 100 billion flops per dollar corresponds to hardware. And 10 trillion corresponds to spending. So if we multiply all three, we get roughly 1 E27 flops. And the final thing we can compute here is the speed at which we're crossing our effective flop gap. To refresh memory, to calculate the effective compute, you actually multiply those three terms. So we need to remember that we're actually doing economics here. So we're plotting things in log plots, and we care about the slopes on the log plots, which means the gross rates. And when you take the log of some multiplication, then you end up with what you see here, which is the sum of the gross rates. So the way to summarize this is how fast you're increasing your effective flop, meaning how fast you're automating all your human task corresponds to the sum of three terms, the gross and spending, to which you add how many flop you're able to get per dollar per year. And finally, the final term is how many 2022 flop you're able to get per flop. So if we go back to this graph here, the speed at which we're crossing your effective gap is roughly the sum of this term here, plus this term here, plus this final term here. The actual sum of these three slopes would be something like this.
And the final thing we haven't discussed in this plot is the time where humanity wakes up to the potential of AI. The theory behind this is that the world will finally understand that there's a potential for GDP to actually increase by tens of trillions of dollars per year. Whereas right now, it seems like companies are only investing tens of billions of dollars in the top AI labs. So we've seen uh, tens of billions of dollars invested in OpenAI. Recently, we have uh, Grok reach a valuation in the tens of billions of dollars. But uh, you can imagine that uh, when we reach this kind of stage, we would get something like tens of trillions of dollars of increase in GDP, and most of this increase will be caused by AI. So now that we have a better understanding of what the model is saying, let's look at some of the results. If we go and report, you can see the actual timeline this model predicts compared to the AGI quadrat timelines. And the plot is a cumulative distribution function, which means that at around 0 0.5, you have the median estimate for when you would expect something to happen. So around 2050, you have the prediction for um, when you could expect transformative AI according to bioanchors. And around 2040, you get full automation according to Tom Davidson's report. But what is actually interesting here is the difference between the 20% automation year and the 100% automation year. So at any given percentile, you can try to figure out what is the distance between the 20% automation year and the 100% automation year. If we go back to this plot, the difference between these two lines is actually a difference in years, which is related to what he calls in this report takeoff speed. So here the takeoff takes roughly four years. And what's actually interesting in this report is not only when we'll get full automation from AI, it's also the speed of this takeoff between 20% and 100% uh, automation. This is why this website is called takeoffspeeds.com. But actually, with this website, you can actually use your own parameters here so that you can model your own trajectory for what the future would look like. For instance, you can play with the presets. You play with the aggressive scenario. You see that you have this weird thing going on here, where uh, basically most of the thing is happening in 2027 in only one month, as I was mentioning in the beginning of the video. So what's explaining most of the increase in computer here is not that we're spending way more on training globally, because we're only at the start of the increase in spending here. But it's really those innovations here. And finally, the third scenario is the conservative scenario. And in this scenario, you don't even have AGI in the 21st century. If you compare with bioanchors, you see that the slope is actually lower in this scenario than in AGI Cotras report. So one thing I haven't mentioned is that the way they do all of these experiments is by doing Monte Carlo analysis, which means you have a bunch of different parameters that you can vary and the first percentile of what happens in terms of aggressiveness or how fast we get to AGI is uh, we get AGI in 2025, so next year, as Elon Musk predicted. And uh, the takeoff speed is uh, roughly three to four months. And to fully understand how they run their multi simulations, it makes sense to look at their economic model. So roughly, the three things that humans are investing in are software, hardware, and they're also spending more. And these three things they're investing on give them more effective compute to train their largest training run. Launching some large training runs helps them cross the effective flop gap to get to some better AI, meaning some AI that can actually automate a lot of cognitive work. Basically, what this would mean is if AIs are able to drive some algorithmic progress, like finding new papers like flash attention. In the case of hardware, you can think of NVIDIA designing new chips with AI. And finally, the last thing they did here is they tried to measure the importance of each parameters in uh, their simulation. And the way they actually compute this is if you change to the aggressive metric value, and then uh, you change the conservative metric value. What is the difference in takeoff speed between using the aggressive metric value and the conservative metric value? So to give a concrete example, for the case of uh, effective flop gap, so actually I realized later that I made a mistake. You're not actually subtracting the effective compute, but you're uh, doing some division. You're actually dividing the effective compute between AGI time and uh, the 20% of automation time. So for the conservative case, it's uh, 1E8 
for the aggressive case is uh, one e one. So if we go back here, by default, the takeoff is uh, three point eight years, and if we change this to uh, one e one, which means that uh, there will be a ten, which means there will be a ratio of ten between the compute needed at twenty percent and one hundred percent automation. We end up with a much uh, shorter takeoff speed of only 0.8 years. If we change this value to uh, 1e8, so remember we are at 0.8, and if you move this to uh, 1e8, we get uh, 6.1. So the difference between 6.1 and 0 0.8 is uh, 5.3 which is exactly the importance uh, that we have here. So as you can see, there's a lot of things going on behind those important variables. And I would have loved to go into detail into uh, all of these different variables, but uh, this is uh, the limit of uh, what I can explain, even my time constraints of one video a day. Just to go back about the one video a day thing, um, when I first started the challenge, I gave myself some rule where uh, if something happened, I would be able to uh, skip one day. So as you can tell, I didn't publish a video yesterday. Um, so I didn't, there's no videos in the last 24 hours. And uh, this is because I used a special rule of if something happens, I um, can use one more day. And what actually happened is that I found this report really interesting and I really wanted to uh, dive deeper, uh, which is why I took an extra day to do it. If you want me to do more videos on AI timelines, uh, let me know in the comments. And as of today, that's the end of the video. So I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Thank you.